Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Zen 3 is here. Six cores, 12 threads for $300 at the end of 2020? Okay. So maybe you should just get the eight core chip for, oh, $450. But the 12 core chip is $550 and that's actually not a bad deal. Is the Ryzen 5 5600X with 6 cores and 12 threads worth it? Well, that's an interesting question, and this video is not really going to attempt to answer it, but I would like to point something out. The Division 2 came out nearly two years ago in February of 2019. It is a fairly well-optimized game. Yes, I know, Ubisoft, but it is actually pretty well-optimized, and it's currently using all six real cores. Notice that we're above 50%. It exceeds 70% multiple times. That is using eight cores. It's into the hyper-threading. I know it's not called hyper-threading, it's SMT, but it's using all of it. This is a completely clean test bench. Clean install of Windows, nothing running in the test tray. This is being recorded on an external computer using a hardware capture card. This is as clean as clean gets. Now, a couple of things. First, we are at 1440p high detail, not ultra, 1440p high, and we have an RTX 3080 installed. I would hope most of you are not putting RTX 3080s on Ryzen 5 3600Xs, excuse me, 5600Xs, but I know some of you will. In fact, I've seen, mul I've seen people even in our own Discord say, that they bought an RTX 3090 for an i7 8700K, which incidentally is this CPU three years ago. Man, have I got a lot to say about it, but I'm not going to here. Huh. I'll probably say a few things here because you know what? That's what I do. Now the Zen 3 chips are amazing. If their prices weren't where they're at, uh, I would be beside myself with love for these things. If this CPU were $200, maybe $250, I would be singing its praises until I fell down and lost my voice. It, it's, it's amazing at the right price. But at $300, here's the problem. You see the clock speed's running at about 4.6 gigahertz? Great. Six cores, 12 threads, 4.6 gigahertz. Intel sells the i7-10700 non-K, eight cores, 16 threads, and it turbos to 4.6 gigahertz all core turbo. Yeah, it's not a K chip. Who flippin' cares? The stock performance difference between a K chip and a non-K chip on the i7 is 100 megahertz. The K chip does 4.7, the non-K chip does 4.6. You just wanna put the non-K chip on a semi-decent reasonable board. Something in the 120 to $140 range would be nice. Uh, an inexpensive Z board would be good because then you can use uh, XMP, overclocked RAM, and you'll get the 4.6 gigahertz all day long. Stick a mid-range cooler on it, you'll be just fine. And you'll get effectively this performance, but you'll get the benefit of eight real cores. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, for those of you playing the home game, Intel is now the value option. Let me say that again, because I'm sure a bunch of chuckleheads in the back don't hear it. Well, but, but AMD is cheaper. AMD is the value. Don't you know? Ryan, but Ryzen. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Let's try this one more time. Intel offers more performance for less money. Overall, usually. There's a couple of exceptions. There's a few corner cases and places where it doesn't. The Ryzen 9... Uh, 5900X, for example, for 550 with 12 cores and 24 threads really is a beast. It's about $100 more than the i9-10850K, but it runs much cooler, it is faster, and it would be my first choice, all things considered. But that being said, if you are building or upgrading a computer today, and you are going to keep your new system whether you just replace your motherboard and cpu or whether you're doing an all-new build if your goal is to get three plus years use out of it 
This game is already almost two years old. It's already using all the cores and some hyper-threading. Now, I want everybody to listen very carefully. You guys all listening? Can you hear me in the back? I hope so. We are in an instanced, repeatable, single-player mission. This is the easiest content in the game because it's not open world. This is a single-use generated mission where you simply run along a predetermined path and face a predetermined number of enemies. I do it because it's repeatable. I do it because it's easy for me to load it up and test it in about 10 or 15 minutes on different machines with a beginning, a middle, and an end, and it gives similar performance from run to run. Open world, large battles, invite somebody to your team and do multiplayer, the dark zone, are you joking? I've published a video over on the Main Tech Deals channel showing, now granted, it was the exception, corner case here. I will absolutely acknowledge corner case. Multiplayer battle, three groups of enemies. It was intense. I did that on a Ryzen 9 uh, 3950X, 16 core, 32 thread processor. That video is on the channel. All 16 cores were in active use. It was up at 60% CPU usage on a 16 core 32 thread processor. Now, corner case, that's not normal. That is That was the most extreme battle I think I've ever seen in the game. So I absolutely acknowledge that's not typical day-to-day -day normal gameplay. But it's coming sooner than you think. Oh, come on, man. Six cores is all you need for five years. <laughs> That's cute. Um, you know, sure. If you play League of Legends and CSGO and Dota 2 and Counter-Strike Global Offensive and World of Tanks, yeah, absolutely. You know what? 100%. Those games will not need more than six cores in the next three to five years. They also don't need a Zen 3. You can save a lot of money by getting a Zen 2 or even a used Zen 1. I mean, for a while there, the Ryzen 5 1600 AF was $85. Drop it on a $70 uh, B450 motherboard and $200 gets you a cooler, a 6-core 12-thread CPU, and a motherboard. Let's make sure everybody can hear that. For 200 total... You got a Ryzen 5 1600 AF, which was a Zen Plus. Not a Zen. Zen Plus. They just named it 1600, but it was really a 2600 with like 100 megahertz star clock speed. It came with a cooler, and you could get a B450 motherboard. Not the fanciest thing to roll, but you could. For $200, you got motherboard, CPU, and cooler. And with the 5600X, you get just the CPU and cooler. It does come with a cooler. It comes with a race stealth. Is the 5600X faster? Yes. If you're buying an RTX 3080, will it take advantage of a 5600X? Yes. Will a Ryzen 5 1600AF bottleneck an RTX 3080? Yes, it will. But you shouldn't be putting a 3080 on either one. A 3080 should be going on a Ryzen 9 5900X, no less, if you're building new. Now, if you already have something, um, if you're in the midway through an upgrade or if you do a graphics card one year and a CPU the next, okay, fine. Maybe you have a 3700X, maybe you have an i9, maybe you have something you've had for a year or two. You're going to upgrade your graphics card, and then in a year, you'll do your CPU. I, I get it. People do that. That's cool. But... If you're buying both the CPU and the graphics card today, and you buy an RTX 3080 and you put it on a six core CPU, allow me to reach through the microphone and smack you upside the head because you're an idiot. Am I being harsh? No, I'm telling you what you need to hear. I'm not here to baby you and tell you what you want to hear. I'm here to tell you what you need to hear. And what you need to hear is that the era of six core 12 thread CPUs, listen carefully, for AAA games, for the next three years forward looking, you're building today, is over. Done. History. Forget about it. 
Now, if you have an existing six core CPU, if you don't play all the AAA games, if you mostly play older games, World of Warships, Overwatch, Fortnite, okay, you know what? I understand. Here's where this makes sense. Do you have a 1080p 144 hertz or 240 hertz monitor? Do you just want really high frame rates, but maybe not the highest detail, and you don't care about uh, Watch Dogs Legion and Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and instead you care about um, esports games and shooters that require very high frame rates? There's a market for the Ryzen 5 5600X. If you've watched to this point, and you haven't tuned me out yet, I would look at something along the lines of an RTX 3060 or 3060 Ti, the Ryzen 5 5600X for high frame rate esports gaming and older games. If you want that Intel level performance, but you just you don't need more cores and you don't care to play the Division 3 when it comes. Fine. Okay. Sure. Uh, I'm on board with that. I I can I can roll with that. That's cool. The Ryzen 7 5800X at 450 is pretty stupid. So it's either 5900X or 5600X. The only other thing I want to talk about is the fact that the i7 8700K was available three years ago for almost this price, 350 instead of 300. And no, it didn't include a cooler, but. I'll do that math equation when I review the CPU properly. But essentially, the deal is not this. The deal was an 8700K three years ago. But that is neither here nor there. And I don't have enough room left in this benchmark to get into it because we are actually getting pretty close to the end. You can see the performance up at the top of the screen, 212 frames per second average with a 139 1% low. If you have a 1440p 144Hz monitor, well, here's the thing. Not only do you need a really, really fast graphics card, but you need a fast CPU. An i7-8700K would do this. An i9-9900K would do this. An i5-10600K would do this. An i7-10700 would do this. But you need the graphics card. Look at the graphics utilization. We're using the graphics card. More on this in another video because there's so much to discuss and I'm out of benchmark footage. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see all of you next time.